So I'm just waiting for the next. Today we had beautiful water, but it was cold. So. Okay, sorry. Okay. Right here. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Faster Masters Rowing Podcast special. It's lockdown training week five. I'm Rebecca Caro. And I'm Marlene Royal. And it's lovely to be here again with you guys. Um, if you've been following us, oh, my God, we are. I can't believe there are five weeks of this, Marlene. I know. I know. I know. We've been. And every week has been kind of different. You know, people's reactions are different every week. They, they're thinking about different things every week. Um, you know, it's 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 an ongoing situation and it's cha changing all the time. But, you know, how you're affected also depends on where you live and your exact circumstances and your country, your state, your province. <laughs> So let's just kick off, though, first with a word from our sponsors. This podcast and none of the Rowing Chat podcasts will be possible without the support of our amazing sponsors. We have two at the moment. The first is that we're doing an audience survey for the entire Rowing Chat network. We have 152 answers already, and we would like to get to 200 by the end of today. So if you're listening for the first time today or you are a regular listener with us, please could you help us out it really helps us understand you and what you want but also to relate to the people who might want to sponsor and advertise with us go to rowing.chat which is our website and scroll to the bottom of the home page and you'll see a little banner ad there that says audience survey click that and it'll take you to the survey it will take you around five minutes so i suggest you get a nice glass of something before you do it and now let's talk about william marnie they are shirt makers for athletic bodies, specifically male bodies. They say that finding good quality clothing when you're an athlete can be a challenge because your physique is not the same as the standard. And dress shirts aren't designed for rowers whose arms and backs are more muscled than the average desk jockey. William Marnie dress shirts are designed from the beginning for tall and fit men. Each shirt has detailing and style fit and fabrics that will change the way you experience clothes, says the founder, Matt Marnie. You may have seen them at the head of the Charles, and they knew they'd come to the right place when they saw the number of tall athletic people walking down the towpath past their booth. And so for the men in your life, ladies, brothers, husbands, please go or take them to William Marnie, buy them a gift, buy a couple of shirts, give them away, and as one customer said, it really was the perfect shirt for her other half. You can get started with an exclusive 10% discount coupon, which is Rowing Chat 10, where 10 is one a zero. Follow the link from the show notes or go to rowing.chat forward slash sponsors. And if you or your business would like to advertise through Rowing Chat, please get in touch. Now, Back to the show, Marlene. I've got a big question to ask. Is the end in sight? Uh, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I think there are different, different reactions. It, it does look like, depending on where you live, if, if um, local authorities have decided that, that the virus has peaked where you live, there, there is starting to be talk of starting to relax some of some of the restrictions perhaps not the social distancing restrictions right away but um it it depends right now so much on what state you live in because for example in, in the united states you know the the new york state is affected oh, yeah. much more than some other states so you know their their rules and they're looking at how they're going to open up the situation so basically um, what states are bordering which states because if people start um, crossing back and forth that that's an issue uh, here in Canada right now the US the US and Canadian border is closed except mm -hmm. for non-essential travel um, the issue no, is essential travel surely not non-essential uh, I mean only essential champ travel <laughs> yes yes I don't want to say so but but the situation right now is if you go out of Canada when you come back in you can um 
when you come back in, you have to absolutely quarantine yeah. for 14, 14 days. And they and if you don't have a quarantine plan, they send you to a, to the nearest hotel and you have to stay there for 14 days. Um, yeah. And right now in Canada, they're saying that's not expected to be lifted at least until the middle of May. So um, that's going to go on for, for some time. Um, I know here in Quebec, where I live, um, they have said no organized sports until August 31st. My God. Yeah, that, so that's a long time. So, you know, there is some discussion that, you know, you, that certain clubs and certain sports can apply for exemptions. So in rowing, we're hoping that we can get an exemption uh, at least for rowing singles or something like that. So, you know, these kind of things are up in the air. But looking at the race calendar, Canadian Henley, which is a very Canadian Henley Masters, which is a very big regatta in Ontario in August, is still on the schedule, though U.S. Masters Nationals has been canceled and, um, you know, some other, obviously, FISA World Masters has been postponed for Vienna till the following year, till 2021. But, you know, so everything's still a little bit, a little bit in flux, but um, it, it seems like at least for singles, some clubs are starting to open up and, you know, every place is, I think, just a little, a little bit different. But I, I know that people are anxious to get on the water again. They're missing their rowing. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so the situation here in New Zealand is that the prime minister announced yesterday that we will be dropping to level three next Tuesday and we're at level four now. So level three, I believe, means that you can go rowing on your own in a single, mm -hmm. but the clubs will still remain closed. Mm -hmm. uh, we're slightly fortunate in our club in that we have a an outdoor compound, which is a sort of locked area where we can store some private singles, which by arrangement, some of us may loan to each other, you know, mm -hmm. so that you can get out on the water, but still you're on your own. And obviously safety is still a concern. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that, that you're safe on the water. Um, but as the good news that I have read today is that World Rowing have announced that they're going to run the under 23 European Championships and the European Senior Rowing Championships at the end of the year are respectively in September and in October. That's so great. That's pretty good news if you're in Europe. Yes, yes. And and Tour de France has been um, postponed. That Tour de France is going to run at the end of August instead of starting at the beginning of July, like it usually does. So so these things are encouraging, and I'm. I'm still optimistic about our fall racing season. And, um, you know, those of us, the, the 1K racing season, as we've talked about before, is disrupted, but we may still have late summer races. And as we talked about with training before, even if we're shifted completely to a fall racing focus, you still have to do this interval work that the 1K racing gives us in the summer because we need to, you know, you need to raise your fitness level in the summer and then and then transition. You know, if you're if you if you're just settling on your long endurance work, you know, that that's very important. But you know, we do need to boost boost the ceiling up. So um I'm not going to quite let everybody escape their intervals in the summer because I think it's still important. Even the, even if we're not racing, um, we can do trials, we can do things, but you know, that, that is an important fitness element. So perhaps I'm the end is in sight. <laughs> I'm definitely hoping that will happen. So our national masters championships is usually in September, uh, which is the end of winter for us, but actually I have my fingers quietly crossed that we may be able to actually have that regatta, um, mm -hmm. which would be pretty cool. Um, maybe some Australians will come join us because their nationals is usually in May. Yeah, and have do have you heard? Are they cancelled? Have they cancelled in Australia? I don't know, um, but hey, we've got Frank from in Frank Invercargill from our Rua Boating Club in New Zealand is uh, is is watching. Here he is. There, he's Frank. So he's not from Invercargill, which is a town, but maybe mm -hmm. he is from Invercargill. 
So Frank, clarify that for us. Are you are you from Invercargill? And we also have a visitor from Adelaide called Aunt Perry. Hi, Aunt. Good to see you here. You've got two ergs in your shed. My, that's luxury, isn't it? <laughs> So for, for most of us, I think, and certainly speaking for my crew and myself, we've had a few kind of falling off the wagon moments in the past week. So mm. we had one girl who did two out of our three pieces one day and then ricked her back. And so she's had to be cycling slash running. Then was someone else got an ear infection and has had to go to the doctor and obviously isn't feeling too good. And then someone else is finding that training in the afternoon is better for her than training in the morning. So like this morning, I was on my own on the herb for the first time. It's, it's an interesting psychology because knowing that your crewmates are doing it, even though, you know, they're in their own homes, has a, a certain, for me, deep level of encouragement. But I think <laughs> do it alone today. Yeah, responsibility. Responsibility. Yeah, there is that. My, my training diary is kind of interesting. And, you know, even though you, in theory, have all the time in the world, I've kind of noticed that I'm not too good at doing warm downs. Well, you see, and that's important. We've discussed that. We we have discussed that, the four stages of a workout, and uh, you're skipping one. <laughs> that's not allowed. <laughs> well, I, I, I did a few pep talks this week, too. I mean, I found some people, you know, some people were just, they were just getting a little bit down and out and, and uh, you know, one, a little, some gloomy weather, you know, it's not summer everywhere here in the north part of North America yet. Um, and I think that can start to get to people if they're, they're getting itchy to get outside and they're not really getting outside as much as they might. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that was definitely part of my week. There was a lot of um, pep talk encouraging and, uh, and, you know, from the coaching point of view, you also, you have to take care of yourself too, because, you know, you, you have to take breaks, you know, there, there been a, there been a day or two this week when I'm just like, you know, I've just got to just go for a walk, go ride my bike, just, just kind of chill out because, you know, coaches have to recharge too. And, um, you know, yeah. you don't want to be trying to encourage someone if you're not feeling energetic yourself so i think you know a word for coaches is you've got to take care of your balance right now too because athletes are perhaps a little bit more demanding right now than they might be because they're home they may perhaps they have a little bit more extra time or they're looking for a different type of type of encouragement because people aren't on the water um you know you're not engaged in your regular practices so so everything is a little bit more intense and um, and mm -hmm. online, you know, I, I'm finding the online world is um, a bit extreme right now. And and I was I was reflecting a bit um, back to 1999. It seems like quite a long time ago, but um, you know, I was the first coach in rowing who did remote coaching over the internet. And you know, when I look back at 1999. And then I look at where we are now, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty astonishing, you know, that there, there are so, so many things and so many resources available for people. And, you know, now we're, we're seeing that kind of, you know, all of it is kind of surfacing right now because we can't do it live, but it's kind of interesting to, for me to look back over this 20 years and see how much, how much has changed when there was just you know one yeah. of one of me <laughs> and now there there are lots and lots of different uh, you know lots of different modalities that people can tap into webinars and paid sessions with coaches who want to teach you how to do kettlebell swings and you know I mean it, the the sky's yoga the sky's the limit so it you know it's really pretty cool and there's definitely room for everybody out there you know there's there's lots and lots of interest and in, i think lots of good coaches too brilliant now frank in frank dean from invercargill has asked a question what are the four stages of a training session because he can only think of three frank you need to go back and listen to episode three but marlene just recap for us warm up the main body of the session cool down and flexibility 
There we go. You don't have to confess which one you're not doing, Frank. But Oh, yeah, it's we'll flexibility. I know it is. <laughs> now, you might remember a couple of weeks ago that we talked about the Stay at Home Rowing Club. Now, this was the most marvelous crew who basically got together <laughs> and said that um, they would like to um, do a fundraiser. So... So they started their fundraiser and they organized for us to have a T-shirt made, which was kind of fun design for the Stuck at Home Rowing Club. And they just published this. So David Peake published the total raised for Doctors Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières was £4,100. So that's that's well over 5000 US dollars, I think. Oh, definitely, yes. So amazing. Thank you to everybody who bought t-shirts. And obviously, they're going to be collector's items. And as the guys said, guaranteed to make you row faster. Now, we also have a little bit of a fun quiz. So during the last couple of weeks, I got sent a quiz by Chris Anton, who's an umpire, a uh, FISA umpire and uh, a coxswain from Birmingham Rowing Club in the UK, which he pulled together. And I thought, hey, that's really fun. Lots of kind of rowing trivia. And then some friends of mine here in New Zealand have started doing a virtual pub quiz every Tuesday night. So we're, we're going to be online with them tonight. Um, we've got to think up 10 questions on a theme. Man. And I have been totally banned from doing any rowing questions. No rowing questions. Rowing questions. Not allowed. Apparently, it's all too difficult for the average man in the street, which is fine. But it got me thinking. Would it be fun to have a Faster Masters quiz? And so... I thought possibly yes. And so Marlene and I have written a quiz for you guys. It's timed, so make sure that you have time to do 10 questions. Basically, you go to myquiz.org and it then asks you to put in a number. And the number of our quiz is 186343. And it's live as of 11.15, so that's eight minutes ago. And you should be able to go and see all the questions. And if you log in with your, a public profile from your social media, it'll obviously acknowledge you and your score. And uh, we'll do the results next week. It, there are no prizes except glory, I'm afraid. And the respect, the respect of the entire Faster Masters rowing community, of course. So... Uh, Please share that around. I'll put it into the Facebook group. And, uh, yeah, it'll be kind of fun. And if anybody wanted to rise to the challenge and uh, and do another, do a different quiz for next week, um, yeah, I'd be game on for publishing that. So, so get in touch. So myquiz.org and our quiz number is 186343. And it's live now. Now, you might remember that last week, we talked a little bit about what was in the Faster Masters program for the month of April. And Marlene had a surprise bonus. What was the bonus you devised, Marlene? Oh, I, I was able to uh, have a very interesting talk with Dr. Connie Lebrun. And um, she is a sports medicine doctor in Alberta and works with the Canadian Olympic team has worked with the Canadian national women's rowing team as well. And um, she had done an interesting presentation on training and for the female masters athlete. And so we, we talked about the effects of aging on um, masters women athletes and also the role of exercise in helping to relieve some of those effects of aging. And um, and so so we had a very, very interesting talk and she herself is a master's athlete and, and a rower. So um, it was it was very informative and um, some good insights into bone health and muscle health and um, how important and the positive effects of, of exercise and how rowing fits into this. So it, it, was, yeah. it was quite a nice, quite a nice talk. 
Yeah, so one of the things about aging, and this is speaking entirely from my own point of view, is that nobody tells you what it's going to be like. And what I found personally really informative from your discussion with Connie was, although she went into medical details of particular conditions, which sincerely I hope I don't get some of these, but she really carefully explained what the symptoms were of that condition, what the effect it had on your rowing life, and what you could do about it. And I found that really instructional. Yeah, she's she's quite a phenomenal, quite a phenomenal doctor, I think. And and she presents internationally and um and she's very coachable as an athlete as well, because I've had the oh. opportunity to, to coach her several times. So if anyone's interested, obviously this is a um, a module in our regular subscription program, but we have made it available as a standalone product. If you go to fastermastersrowing.com forward slash our courses um, or go to the main menu and look for our programs, right at the top of the programs page is the athlete interview um, here with a picture of Connie with a lovely background she's put of um, some crews racing. I don't know. Did you that, ever ask? That's her. That, that's her. That's her in the in the picture in the quad behind her. So that's her wow. racing in St. Catharines at the FISA World Masters. Nice. Really, really nice. That's superb. So um, it, that's $3 if you want to get it. You get a document that has a link to the full 40-minute interview and also a summary of the different topics that are discussed. And she's rowing in the quad with Volker Nolte. Oh, she's See, Volker. I know. Yeah, yeah, they're they're team they're teammates and boatmates. Fantastic. Now, another brief reminder: if you haven't yet got our free training program for lockdown, it's on the link on the screen, and all of the links of everything that we talked about today and the previous four weeks of lockdown training um, are on our Faster Masters blog. It's called Useful Links for Rowers during COVID-19, really catchy short title. I should have thought of that perhaps a bit better. Um, but in there, you will find all of the lovely um, hip flexibility and pelvic mobility stretches from last week's show. You'll find the links to the training program. You'll also find links to the Stuck at Home Rowing Club, those great people on Facebook, um, and several other groups who are organizing shared activities. And if you have a group, or an activity that you'd like to publicize, please just get in touch with us. You can do it through the website and we'd be pleased to help you out. Oh, and could I mention Rebecca, um, for people who are members of US Rowing, or if you join as a member of US Rowing, US Rowing has been sponsoring quite a large number of webinars for the past two weeks. There's a different one every day. And if you're a member of U.S. Rowing, you can uh, register for the webinars. I believe each one they'll accept up to 500 people. And, and U.S. Rowing does have a, I don't have the, the price exactly um, in front of me, but, but they do have a, a, a kind of um, basic membership that you can then uh, register for the webinars. If you're a championship member with $65 a month, you have um, online access to these webinar recordings on demand any anytime you, you would like and, and in the future. So there has been a, a really good amount of information there. And so that, that's another kind of resource that has come out of um, our lockdown period here. So um, I think, you know, you can become a basic member of U.S. going any country if you like, but um, you know, that is a nice resource to take advantage of as well. Yeah, I just went to the US Rowing website. It's under news. And here was the April 20 through to 25. So this week's webinar has uh, Steve Gladstone, who, of course, is the Yale Heavyweight Men Chief Coach, uh, Jim Dietz. And it says more, which is great. I don't know who more is, but they are very clear about how to go in there and how to get a hold of it. If you're not a member, what to do. So thank mm -hmm. you, U.S. Rowing. That is great community service. 
So, any final thoughts, Marlene, as we move into the end of lockdown week five? Well, I think I think people are ready to get back on the water. Obviously, and uh, I'd, I've done some question and Zoom call question and answers with some of the, the teams that I work with this week, and um, you know, one of their comments has been that this is just not the time of year when I'm used to being on the erg. You know, so so there's a lot of. Um, curiosity and focus on like anything land training people can do. People are a little bit land training obsessed right now, which I, which I can understand if you, if you can't get out or get on the boat. Um, cycling has been super popular. You know, that's something that it seems a lot of people are able to get out on, on the bike. And I would definitely encourage them to do that. Um, one session that I really like to do if you is, um, is, is, bike and run, bike and run, like go out and bike, you know, and then get off your bike and fast walk or jog for a little bit, get back on your bike, you know, and just that's another type of kind of cross training session you can do, especially if you can get on, like get on trails, if you can get off, get off the road and get off, you know, off the beaten track a little bit. Um, and, and I've gotten some really nice comments from some of our listeners and uh, Steve Maynard Moody, who's a master's uh, master scholar in Kansas, you know, has written that, you know, I've been enjoying your weekly radio show with Rebecca and what I get most from your conversations is just the upbeat commitment to stay active, you know, so um, somebody's listening to us <laughs> and, uh, and also uh, Sarah Younger, another master's rower who um, lives in the east coast and she said you know every every podcast i listen to i just make little notes at my desk and you know little comments like you say just do it and time block 25 minutes um you know all these little tips are just just kind of helping me keep going when everything's a little bit out of rhythm so you know thank you for listening and for sending us you know your your thoughts and um We've got in some comments in from Facebook. Sorry, I don't know who this is, but someone says maybe this is a good time for people to write up their rowing experiences for the next Rowing Tales. Now, those of you who, who don't know this, each year for the past three years, I've done a book called, oh, look, there we go. That's got a post-it note on because I have to send it to someone, called Rowing Tales. It has a different front cover design every year. And inside there are just lots of super short stories by great people about almost anything to do with rowing. Um, it helps, some of them are lighthearted, some of them are um, tragic, some of them are disaster stories, some of them are just quirky. Like we had a whole flush of um, ocean rowing stories last year. And, oh, it's Cece. Hey, Cece, thank you. That's um, Cece Aguda, who is from the Pacific Northwest. She sent us a lovely story about rowing with whales, which she sees when she's out rowing on the Kerr coastline. And I just welcome pretty much any tale. It doesn't need to be short or long. It doesn't matter if it's not professionally written. Just record it on your voice recorder and send it over to me. So I have a confession, which is um, actually, Marlene, I should, I should tell you this, that a couple of weeks ago, someone on the Masters Rowing International Facebook group started a thread, which was, hey, we should share our rowing bloopers, which, you know, they're like the outtakes from videos and TV shows. <laughs> and it's one of the most popular threads I have ever seen with Stories of coming across young men peeing out of the boat or the time when the coach <laughs> and <it's the> <laughs> failed and they just rode away into the distance because they didn't want to stop and help him. And <laughs> <laughs> they you take your revenge. <laughs> hilarious. Um, and so a lot of those, um, yes, I have quietly contacted a few of the authors of those uh, to see whether or not they could make rowing tales, but I am definitely on for more. And the whole point about rowing tales is the reader should empathize with the story. They should be able to say, oh, my gosh, something like that happened to me. Or, oh, my gosh, I hope something like that never happens to me. And 
my vision is someone standing on a riverbank <laughs> chatting to the person next to them. And that's the sort of story that they tell after you've seen something happening on the horizon of, between a couple of rowers. So please, I would love rowing tales. It generally goes to print September time. So I know, I'll have to write some because... <laughs> I, listeners, I'd just like you to know Marlene promises every year to write something for me. And she's she says, I have a great story. And then she goes, oh, but I'm, I don't want to write it. So Marlene, you're in public now. You've got to do it. So thank you, everybody, for coming online, for hanging out with us for just kind of being along for the ride. It's been a hell of a lot of fun. And we will and do this again. Can... It'll be next Monday night uh, if you're in Europe or the US, uh, Tuesday if you're in uh, Australia or New Zealand. And we very much look forward to seeing you again. Send us any questions you have um, and send us any fun events or things that you're doing so that other people can take inspiration from how to survive the lockdown with Faster Masters Rowing. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>